Propulsion systems are cool. There are cars, planes, rockets, etc. I want to make my own UAV to practice making AI in a not boring way. But before we get to the riveting world of machine learning, this puppy's got to fly. I like fluid dynamics, so I thought I could make my own propeller. There's this new propeller design from MIT that's taking the world by storm. It has a toroidal geometry to reduce sound, making it energy efficient. However, this propeller has less work area, so while it would be great for cargo ships, it would be less useful in a fighter jet, or maybe even a 747. This is because in order to get the same thrust, you'd have to increase the diameter of the blade. And in some situations, that's not only impractical, but impossible. I tried to print a few of these and realized I had no idea what I was doing. So I stopped and went with something I knew a bit more about. This is a ducted fan. Some of the perks include suppressed vortex junk and being able to modify the airflow. These are actually huge because without them, you'd have no sonic booms at your air show. However, EDF or electric ducted fans don't have near the pressure change of, well, a jet engine. So supersonic flow is out of the question. Regardless, that's what I went for. I designed these with a high torque motor in mind. This means a high pitch aerofoil design which looks like this, with a pitch of 15 degrees. In hindsight, this was an underestimate. A 30 or 40 degree angle would have done better. You may notice that the angle goes from steep at 90 degrees on the inside to 15 on the outside. This is in part to help the structural integrity of the fan. The more area you have attached to the center, the less likely it is to fail as the pressure is less. My fan area is tiny, 68 millimeters. So if you stretch the original aerofoil to the center like this, there would be less work area, and as a result, likely less thrust. You might want to do that because it keeps your Reynolds number consistent throughout your wing, meaning less turbulence. To keep this short, there are a lot of knobs to tune, and when each turn costs $4 in two hours, you end up with a sample made largely by guessing. One thing I do want to test is how many blades are optimal. There's no math for that at least none that I know of. So I made this thrust test stand, which is inaccurate but consistent, so at least it'll be able to compare against itself. And we're going to see if this is an avenue or if I just need to buy some propellers online. First up, 12 blades. This one performed poorly. 42 grams of thrust at 50% power where it failed. Next, nine blades. Better at 65.35 grams, but I want at least 100 as an arbitrary value. The six blade topped the charts with 119.59 grams and the three blades with 101.19 grams. All of the blades exploded around 50% power. This means it's a design flaw. If I didn't change the geometry, I could change the material to one that has a higher tensile strength. As you saw in the last video, that's not exactly possible at the moment. So I'll elect to buy these propellers that say they pull 825 grams of thrust at max power, which is 345% better. But for my pride's sake, I made a fan that's 46% more efficient than the one I'm buying, so the geometry was good. It just needs to be bigger. And for an EDF, 68 millimeters is as far as I go. If I go bigger, I might as well make a jet engine. 